guys, this is Jocelyn from Fantasia Elegance with another wire wrap jewelry tutorial for you. I do apologize to my regular subscribers for the long delay in getting you another tutorial. Um, I've recently started a new nursing job and I'm also in the middle of an EMT course, so life has been a little bit crazy lately. But I thought I would make it up to you by doing one of my most popular and requested tutorial topics so far. So I give you the Tree of Life design. This really is one of my favorite designs of all time because it looks absolutely mesmerizing but is surprisingly easy to make and it does have quite a few possible variations to mix it up as well. Um, but for this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make a basic circular frame style and I'll just touch on some of the possible variations you might do at the end. So before we jump in, please do take note that I have, as always, included a list of the tools and materials I used in the description section below including where I purchased them, uh, since those always seem to be very frequently asked questions. So as we begin, let me just say that this is a very flexible style. You can really make it any size you want, so I won't be giving you exact measurements for how much wire you'll need, um, but to make a medium-sized pendant, you will want to use 18 gauge or thicker round wire, and this is going to be either dead soft or half hard, I use dead soft because it's just easier to get a nice rounded shape that way. And then for the tree portion of this, we're going to be using 24 gauge dead soft wire. And this does have to be dead soft since we'll be twisting and bending it a lot. And I will be using um, sterling silver for both that I purchased from RioGrande.com. As far as your tools go, you'll need just the standard things. Um, you'll need two pairs of chain nose pliers make sure you have two of those, that's important, and some flush cutters, and some round nose pliers, and again the brands and specific tools I use are in the description section below. You'll also want a round object to help you shape the frame around, such as a jar of nail polish, or a ring mandrel also works quite well for this. So just something round, the approximate diameter that you want your pendant to be. And you may also wish to have a steel bench block and jeweler's hammer, but that is optional. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and make a frame that we will be making our uh, tree of life on. So you're going to take your 18 gauge wire, and whatever I do when I'm first starting out to cut some wire is to pull out my um, cleaning cloth here. It's just a jewelry polishing cloth I got off of Amazon. And uh, I just run over this wire a few times. You can see I'm kind of flexing it first one way or the other. And this simultaneously cleans it and also gets any little kinks out so it's nice and smooth and straight and ready to work with. So I'm just doing about a, I don't know, 8 inch section here, just getting it prepared. And we're going to go ahead and just wrap this right around the form you want to use for your frame before we cut it. So let me pull out my nail polish here, and I'm just going to start bending this around just to get the wire into a more rounded shape here. And you will be making some adjustments with your pliers so it never turns out perfect the first time you wrap it here. Let me actually switch to my ring mandrel. I'm thinking that's gonna, gonna work better for this. There we go. And what you want to make sure of with this is that you have at least about an inch and a quarter of a wire tail on either side of where they come up and meet at the top of your circle. And just for your reference, if you're trying to make the same size of frame as I am, mine is going to be approximately one and a quarter inches in diameter. And that comes to about three centimeters, a little over three centimeters. So once you've got your circular shape, Go ahead and trim that off, making sure that you have 
again from this point where they the two uh, two wires cross you want to have at least an inch and a quarter tail on either side so let me just trim that off and you may need to make some slight adjustments to make sure that your shape is nice and round and doesn't have any funny little bumps going on with it. I like to try and do this mainly with my fingers so that I don't get unnecessary tool marks on there, but you can use your uh, pliers if you need to. And I think I'm going to make this a little bit bigger perhaps. So one of the variations I was mentioning earlier is of course to do a different shape for the frame, such as oval or teardrop or a marquee shape, but the round is the most classic and probably easiest to start out with. So once you have your shape nice and round, what we're going to do is pull out some chain nose pliers and you're going to grip right where these two wires cross and you're going to bend the two tails straight up. Okay, so once we have our two tails going straight up, we're going to again take the round nose a uh, chain nose pliers, sorry, and we're going to gripping right at the base here. We're going to bend these both forward. So this is the front of the pendant now. And doing the same thing on the other side here. Just going to give these a slight bend forward just like that. You can see there. And then going over to round nose pliers, I'm going to gripping at the base of right above that bend we just made, so right here, I'm going to start curving these back around and I'm forming the bail that's going to be at the top of the pendant. So you want it to be a nice arc here and it's going to form a kind of teardrop shape right inside like that. And you want to do the other side to match. So right here I'm just checking to make sure that they're both the same height and then looking from the side that they're both the same shape so they match up nicely. And once you have bent these two tails all the way around, so they're meeting here, you're going to... Alright, I'm just separating this apart a little bit so we can just focus on working on one side right here. I'm going to just grip right where it comes back around to this little straight portion we made right here. And I'm going to straighten out that little last bit right there just so it's running parallel with that little straight portion we have right here. So you want these two spots to be running parallel with each other. Just like that. And do the same thing on the other side. And then you want these to kind of make a V shape. So I'm going to hold it right down here. So I've got both of those wires, just like that. And I'm going to very gently bend this outward. Just a teensy bit. Switch to the other side here. And again, bend that slightly outward. Just like that, so they come into a sort of V shape right here. There we go. And once again, checking that both sides of the bale are matching up evenly. And once you're sure that they're matching up nicely and they're both the same size and shape, you can just trim off the excess tail we have down here. So what you're going to trim is anywhere past 
where it's sticking out past the bottom of the bale right here. If I can get it to focus. So right there. And again on the other side. Trying to get it at an angle where you can see it here. Right there. So once you've got your bale shaped nicely here, we're going to move on over to using some of this 24 gauge wire. Again, dead soft. And as before, I'm just going to pull out my cleaning cloth here to get a little bit of it ready. There we go. And you're going to want to cut about oh, one and a half to two inches of this. And let me just show you how much that, yep, so about two inches. Go ahead and trim that off the flush cutters. And I'm going to grip the middle of this with my chain nose pliers. Make a nice U-shaped bend there. And we're going to lay this on over both sides of our bale. Just like that. Holding it in place with my left hand, I'm going to use the chain nose pliers to squeeze both ends here so they cross over each other. And then I'm going to start wrapping both of these wires. Right around what's going to be the shank of the bale here. And you want to make sure that you're wrapping these as tightly as you can. And once you've wrapped around this as many times as you can, just go ahead and trim off the ends with your flush cutter. And I'm going to tighten that little end on down so it's not sticking out. I like to try and tuck these ends either on the side or the back. And you may notice as you're doing this that one side of the bale starts to look larger than the other. That's alright. Just use your uh, chain nose pliers to do any little tweaks that are necessary to get those looking even again. There we go. And I'm going to trim off the last little bit of my other tail here and tighten that on down. Alright, so now we have our frame all set and ready to go. And if you want to at this point to give it a little more stability, you could go ahead and hammer this out. It's optional, but I would recommend doing it just to give it some more, um, some more strength. So let me go ahead and do that.